Good morning, London Church, here in the uh, sanctuary and out in Zoom land. Um, here in the sanctuary, we have the sun beaming through. I think it's the sun. We have not seen it for a week, so um, we're happy that the rain has stopped for a while and we have sun. Let us start today by uh, singing our gathering hymn, which is found on page 328. Surely the presence of the Lord, if you will stand if you are able. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. You may be seated. Uh, we are still supporting the Heifer Project, which has been going for a few weeks with the daycare. And we're trying to get as many flocks of chicks as possible. So please remember to bring back your plastic egg that you were given last week, filled with an offering uh, for this mission project. Get a new egg. Fill it up again. We can just keep this going and have lots of chicks. Uh, the Sunday that's the deadline is next Sunday, so fill a lot up this week. Thank you. Uh, we're continuing uh, to have Bible study at Casa Mia's on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. We are, will be starting a new study based on Bob Bell's series, NUMA. Come in person or watch in Zoom. The link will be in your email on Monday night. We're continuing to support the mission project for Ukrainian relief. The donation basket is on the organ, or you can send your donation to Jen Christmas, whose information is in the bulletin. The work of the church also needs your support. The collection plates are on the organ and the chancel rail or again, you may send your uh, donation to Jen Christmas. Let us now continue with our service. Please stand for the call to worship. It's on page 850 of the hymnal. Thank you. 
Behold, how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the presence of God on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded this blessing, life forevermore. The first hymn this morning is found on page 636. Christian people raise your song. If you will remain standing, please. join me in the unison prayer. Holy God, you have transformed impossibility into reality through resurrection. You have coaxed us to sing springtime alleluias where once there was a gray dawn. You have called us out of the tombs we inhabit into an undreamed of tomorrow and we praise you for this day. Come risen Christ in newness and hope on this Easter tide day. Amen. And you may be seated. Oh, you already are. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody on this beautiful sunny day? Everybody good? Okay. Great. Well, we come today we come today, this sun, second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Easter, uh, to continue to give thanks to God, to continue to give thanks to God for all the blessings, all the joys, all the God sightings, and to lift up before the congregation of faith. Now, I, I say that phrase every week, to lift up before the congregation of faith, but it is important. It is important that we support each other, and we do in this church. Uh, that we uh, reach out and support each other as a congregation because our faith is not an isolated one. It's a, it is a community one. It's one based on community. Uh, so we give thanks for that. And we lift up before the congregation of faith all the joys and all the concerns and the God sightings that we've got. So I'm going to take the microphone. No one 
saying anything. So anyway, I will tell you of a lovely, lovely service that we have every year, and every year it just seems um, more meaningful and poignant. But we have a day of remembrance, and each person who has passed away during the previous year is recognized individually, honored with a flower that the relative or friend or comes and puts in a vase. Um, our chorus sings three songs. Um, anyway, it is so touching and meaningful. And except for the singing, it is a Quaker, you know, service. <laughs> they added us because we're so wonderful. But uh, anyway, it was just a lovely, lovely thing. That's a blessing, yes. I just want to remind everyone to be careful doing the sol uh, solar solstice tomorrow. Eclipse. Eclipse, okay. One of those things where the sun is going to be shining bright and don't look at it without your glass, sunglasses, special sunglasses. I, you can straighten that all out. <laughs> yes, I just want to give thanks for our church today because I don't know, it's the most horrible thing that can be going on at home sometimes. And then you come to church and you just feel so much joy about that God is really what matters and that we can all of us feel kind of the same thing. And it's really a wonderful community. And it was just wonderful to have my brother in law and my sister with us this whole week. Everybody's home, everybody's feeling well, and it's just nice to have It's a blessing, yes. Chris? We have on our prayer list, Chris, last week you lifted up Joyce. Is, uh, how's she doing? Uh, Joyce has not started therapy yet, but she's ready to Okay, so. Okay, so we'll keep Joyce in our prayers, yes. Okay, okay. And uh, Hap Kersey is continuing to face medical challenges. Alyssa, she, she had a surgery? I Okay. Okay, keep Alyssa in your prayers. Frank and Dolores, of course, and, and uh, the family and friends of Cooper Hughes, particularly Katie. Um, Tom? Hanging in. Hanging in, okay. Rizza, Caroline, uh, Rachel, David, Prayers are asked for Bobby and for Pat White. Connor? For Brian, for Lyle and Carol and for Mindy. Uh, for Charlotte, of course, and for Linda, Penny. And prayers are asked for Mike and Judy and Libby. Are there others? If not, then let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we come to you on this beautiful day to give you thanks for all the blessings, to give you thanks for the joys, and to lift up before the throne of your grace all of those who we have named here and those who we hold in our hearts. Be with each one. Let them know that you are God. Let them know that through you all things are possible. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
please join in the prayer for illumination. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. First reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. The group of believers was one in mind and heart. None of them said that any of their belongings were their own, but they all shared with one another everything they had. With great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God poured rich blessings on them all. There was no one in the group who was in need. Those who owned fields, and houses would sell them, bring the money received from the sale and turn it over to the apostles. And the money was distributed according to the needs of the people. The second reading is from 1 John 1, 1 through 2, second chapter, second verse. Announcement about the word of life. We announce to you what existed from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have seen and our hands handled about the word of life. The life was revealed and we have seen and we testify and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy can be complete. The message of God is light. This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light and there is no darkness in, in him at all. If we claim we have followed with him, and live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. If we claim we have never sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you don't sin. But if you do sin, we have an advocate in the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is God's way of dealing with our sins, not only yours, but the sins of the whole world. Our preparation is uh, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, page 420. If you will please stand. If you were able.
standing for the reading of the gospel, which is found today in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors, because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in, in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Holy God, light of the world, shine upon us and disperse the clouds which surround us, that we may reflect the power of the resurrection in our life together with you. Amen. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. That is the message of these three epistles attributed to John, 1st John, 2nd John, and naturally 3rd John. Right there in the fifth verse of this first chapter of 1st John, that's the message. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. You can't say that the author hides the main point or beats around the bush. That is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. When I mentioned to my clergy study group that uh, I was going to be doing an Eastertide sermon series on 1 John, there were 
more than a few ro rolled eyes. I can see that even on Zoom uh, about this choice, partly because they all know that I really like that, that portion of Acts that Chuck read this morning uh, about the life in the early church. Uh, and they, of course, everybody all around the country, all around the world today, people are hearing about Thomas, the guy who gets his own adjective, doubting. Um, it's a well-known narrative. But my friends were also concerned because this is a relatively unknown scripture. Sure, there are some famous quotes from these letters. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. That's 1 John 3, the first verse. Since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. I have a friend, Paul Day, who wrote a, a praise song based on that verse. I'll play it for you sometime. Um, it's good stuff there. And maybe they say you could build a sermon series around kind of John's best quotes, his greatest hits. But I think the epistles are worth our attention. So while we look at these greatest hits, the text of lectionary assignments are certainly appropriate for us during this Easter time. Especially light. Light. We're glorying in the sunlight today. But when I was growing up, and I lived in a little town on Delmarva, right on the Maryland-Delaware line, we were about 10 miles inland from a little spit of fairly remote, underdeveloped land called Fenwick Island. Now, I know Fenwick Island today has all kinds of neon and street lights, and all kinds of stuff like that. But when I was growing up there, and this is the 1950s, I'm, I'm dating myself here, uh, there was a, a diner. There was a motel that was owned by a, 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 the family of a classmate of mine. There were a number of beach houses, you know, the one and two story clapper buildings that people went down. Didn't have any insulation, didn't have any winter, any winterization. You went there, you went there in the beach. Uh, and with that, oh yeah, there was, a, there was a, a, a sub and ice cream shop owned by my high school math teacher, Vance McCabe. Um, and that's about it, except for the lighthouse. Except for the lighthouse. Today, Fenwick Island has all that other stuff. But back then, we could go down to the beach at night, and there was no ambient light. Ocean City hadn't developed much, much beyond uh, 33rd Street, I guess. Um, and uh, there was no ambient light. You get the stars, you get the moon, and you got the light from the lighthouse. Fenwick Light was built before the Civil War to help keep mariners from getting shipwrecked. You wouldn't believe that uh, Delmarva, that little, that little barrier island out there, uh, was the sign of shipwrecks, but about six miles offshore was the Fenwick Shoals, and there had been, uh, there had been a number of shipwrecks there, and the uh, Lighthouse Board decided to build a lighthouse for $25,000. They bought the land, 10 acres of land on Fenwick Island, for 50 bucks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, the family that bought, that bought that land, they bought that land from, still lives on it. So, um, so they built the light, and it, its light can be seen 50, at least 15 miles out at sea. It provides light today, it provides guidance for those on their journey. It's a beacon. It's a beacon, and that's what 1 John is talking about. Light is a beacon to fellowship with God, fellowship with each other, and light guides us on our journeys in life. 1 John challenges us to walk straight in the light of Easter. Um, he, I guess I... I want to be careful here. We call him, we call it John because that's the name assigned to these letters. We don't, we don't really know who John was. The truth is, uh, it could be anybody who lived back then. 
Some think it was one of the original 12. Others think it was another John. Some lump it all together and, uh, and the, all the writings that bear the name of John, the Gospel of John, the, the three letters of John, and Revelation to John of Patmos uh, into one person. Uh, but that seems unlikely. Maybe it was a community that was founded by John that kept John's teachings alive through these writings and named them after their founder. We don't know. But let's just, let's just take that shorthand, John, and, and run with it. It's as good as any. This writer, he or maybe a she, what matters is, are we going to listen to the words and learn to walk in the light that John calls us to? How shall we live now that Easter has come? Now that life has changed and resurrection is real, how do we reflect that new reality? How do we reflect that light as we walk in this life, as we walk in our existence every day? It begins with the gospel. And indeed, the whole gospel text is in the beginning. In the beginning, there was light. But here it isn't a reflection on what was, but as light is now a reflection on what has been revealed. What has been revealed in the darkness of Good Friday, and what has been revealed in the light, the spectacular light of Easter resurrection morning. And I promise the light is open to all. Life is accessible. The gift is within reach because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And that's the new reality. That's the new reality. And in that reality, we are surrounded by joy. That's what the writer declares to us in these first few opening verses. That light, that joy, carries possibilities and it carries responsibilities. Possibilities include, remember what we have declared to you and what we, and what we ask you to carry on in, in declaring. It also has a responsibility to have fellowship, to have fellowship with Christ and equally important to have fellowship with one another. What a great design. Yeah, you know, sometimes we want to focus on the individual. We imagine that our faith is a, is a personal thing. It's me and Jesus. Me and Jesus. But the Bible consistently reminds us that our faith is a community thing. It's something not only supported in community, but is based in community. We're in this together. We support one another. We encourage one another. We disciple one another all along the way. We're not alone in this journey. We have fellowship with one another if we walk in the light. Pretty straightforward, just walk in the light. We wish it was straightforward. It appears in many places. It appears in many places, but it challenges us. Because the text is asking not just about walking in the light, but what kind of footprint we leave when we do that. What kind of impact do we have on the world around us? the physical world, the human world. What example do we give? What do we, example do we give about how we are to live in this world? It isn't, like I said, just about you and Jesus. It's about you and the community of faith and the fellowship. And the community of faith includes the whole world. It isn't just a bonus for doing good work. Fellowship, fellowship is at the heart of our faith. It's a sign, a signal that we are not left to navigate the journey alone. Just like that, just like that uh, lighthouse board built that Fenwick light. They built that light to help people navigate and avoid shipwrecks. And the light, the light of Jesus, that beacon that Jesus shines forth, helps us navigate our faith. We're not left alone. We do it together in partnership with the whole community. We're part of a body. In the United Methodist Church, we call it the connectional system. We support one another, regardless, all around the country, all around the world. 
I have had opportunity to call a pastor who I didn't know in St. Augustine, Florida, and say, look, I got a parishioner whose granddaughter is down there and needs help. And that pastor reached out and helped that kid from northern Baltimore County down in Florida. It's a connectional system that we work together. When we acknowledge that our choices and our, that our lifestyle impact people all around the world, all around the planet, we catch something of what living as one body, one body in Christ really means. That's where the joy is to be found. John is invoking the editorial we. He says, we are writing these things so that your joy may be complete. We, our joy may be complete. This community, this community in the idea of discipleship. This community in walking in the example of Christ. We live in and work in a, an arena of mutual support and love of shared wisdom and hope. We are put back together when we fall apart by the loving arms of the community. Walk, says John, walk in such a way that those around you are enlightened. Walk, John says, walk in such a way that the world has left a better place when you have stepped on it. A cleaner place, a more sustainable place, a more abundant place. Walk, says John, because we are the people of the resurrection who know that death is not the final word, but the promise of life. What does it mean that God is light? What does it mean that, does it mean that God is the opposite of darkness? Don't, don't make your answers complicated. What does it mean for you that God is light? Every single human being loves light. Even that light that Christmas watch is reflecting on my my glasses right now. Oh, <laughs> I love that light, Chris. <laughs> That's the kind of light. <laughs> You're enjoying the sunshine. I understand. I understand. Whew. Okay. <laughs> light is life. Light gives happiness. Light enables us to see clearly. Light is power. Light is the source of all life. A plant can't grow without life. Light. And if you want to grow without light, it ain't going to happen. The light of Jesus is shining, and we're growing in faith. However, if the metaphor of light and darkness is helpful to illustrate God's action in our lives, revealing how it should be, Reverend Fernando Sanchez suggests the concepts of a lighthouse. That's where I came up with the idea to talk about my childhood time on the beach at Fenwick. A lighthouse is a tower, Sanchez writes, a building or other type of physical structure designed to emit light from a system of lamps and lenses and serve as a beacon for navigational aid, for maritime pilots at sea or on inland waterways. As Christians, we have a lighthouse called Jesus, who shines, who is our beacon to navigate our personal journey of faith. The radiant light of the lighthouse shines in the darkness as Jesus is our radiant light of faith, hope, love, and redemption. There is no darkness in our spirit. We walk in the light of Easter, a new beginning, a new hope, because Jesus walked in the light as well. Reverend Sanchez made this observation very recently. I read it in a tract I, I, I read. But it's not all that different than something the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, wrote several centuries ago about this epistle of 1 John. He described it as a plain, how full, how plain, and how deep a compendium of genuine Christianity. It's interesting, isn't it, how the light of Easter never goes out of style. Thanks be to God. Amen. You to turn to page 15 in your hymnals. The 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus sent us, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and again gave thanks to you, gave this to his disciples and said, drink from this cup, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the communion stewards to come forward. <laughs>
God, we have received so much from you and we return this portion for the work of your church in the world so that all may come to walk, walk in the light of Jesus. We make this offering boldly in his name. Amen. The final hymn this morning is found in The Faith We Sing, The Little Books. And uh, it is one we all know. And it's uh, Just a Closer Walk With Thee, 2158. charge, I just want to re-emphasize what Pat said. Tomorrow there's going to be an eclipse uh, sometime around 2 o'clock in our neighborhood. Don't look at it without the special glasses. Make sure you do that. And now, my friends, we're going to walk in the light. We're going to, we're going to walk in the light, not just of the sun and the moon, but we're going to walk in the light of Jesus. We're going to walk in the light that God gives us. So go forth into this world and be that light. Go in the name of Jesus, the Redeemer. Go in the name of God, the Creator. And go in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. Amen.